The Gregory party is very near to their home port at last. Captain Bradford is standing in the bow of the small boat with which Johnson rescued them, talking to Johnson as they thread their way carefully through the small shipping of the outer basin. In the stern, Mrs. Gregory, Joan, and Jerry are talking as the boat glides into the harbor under sail. It is just before midnight of a very dark night. The harbor is unusually quiet as the small boat drifts easily before a five-mile wind. Oh, but Joan... I don't see how anything can happen to us now. Oh, we're nearly home. We are some few miles from our anchorage, and then a drive by motor of more than 20 miles is there. That's right, Joan, but surely the danger is past now. I am not so sure of that. Oh, forget it, Joan. You act like these Euclidians could do just as they please all over the world. We got away from them, didn't we? We did. Then all their smart science and inventions didn't do them so much good after all. You seem to forget that it was in a Euclidean submarine we made our escape. And our present safety is due to the perfection of Euclidean devices, which made it possible to leave that submarine far below the surface and rise to this boat. Of course you're right, Joan. Euclidians are very clever, but after all, they can't always win. You bet they can't. And two hours from now, we'll be safe at Mrs. Gregory's home. I am anxious to see your home, Mother. Your home, John, dear. Mm. Yeah, and I'd kind of like to see my dad. Gee, you know, we've been going three months now, and I haven't had a chance to even send him a postcard. Well, I think you'll find that Johnson has kept your father informed of our doings, Jerry. I sure hope Dad doesn't know all that's happened to us, or he'd be plenty worried. There is something very strange to me in that sensation you describe as worry. Until you came to Euclidia, I had never heard the word used. Now I understand what it means, and I am beginning to learn how to worry. Well, why bother to learn to worry? Gosh, most people do plenty of that without even trying to. Joan is struggling to understand our way of living, Jerry. I think I may like it after I'm familiar with it. Oh, Mrs. Gregory. Yes, Jerry? Can I, uh, may I... Take Joan out and show her Hollywood Boulevard right away? Well, hardly tonight, Jerry. It'll be nearly morning by the time we arrive at home. And you must hurry to see your father first. Oh, sure, sure. I meant tomorrow night. Well, we'll see how things work out. What is Hollywood Boulevard, Mother? That's where you see all the moving picture stars. Moving picture stars? Hollywood Boulevard, Joan, dear, is a street that wants a bit of knowing and sometimes a great deal of understanding. But you'll enjoy it as you see it with Jerry. I want to see the ladies' garments in the stores you have told me of, Mother. Now, there's a job for you, Jerry. Take Joan around while she window shops in all the stores. Oh, no, no, nothing doing. I'm not going to waste a lot of my time standing around while some girl looks at a lot of funny hats and dresses. Well, I'll spare you that. What is window shopping? Gee whiz, Joan. I don't see how you ever got to be 15 years old and not learn anything. Now, Jerry... Joan knows a great many things, even though they do constitute a strange education for our world. Strange is right. Hey, Johnson and Tex are coming back here. Yes, and they appear to be watching something in the sky. Probably that Euclidean plane. Oh, that plane. I had forgotten it. Oh, so had I. But it looks like we're going to get a swell chance to remember. I'd say it was the same plane, but I want to ask Joan. What is it, Captain? Johnson and I just discovered that there's a plane flying around over us. Too dark to see it, and they're not showing any lights. But I thought I heard them cruising around with a very quiet motor some time ago. Oh, but those Euclidean planes don't sound the same as ours, do they, Joe? In this case, they would. In this case? Oh, sure. You don't know these Euclidians like we do. They think nothing of carrying two kinds of engines in a plane. Uh, how about that, Joan? This plane is undoubtedly equipped with an ordinary motor, so they will excite no suspicion when heard cruising around over the harbor. Well, I should think the fact that they're running without light would excite plenty of suspicion. Yes, it will, but no one will know what to do about it. Well, what do you suppose they're flying around over here for? Well, I would say some attempt would be made to prevent our landing. Hmm, when these fellows make attempts, it's usually a pretty good try. To... I think we are in no immediate danger. Joan feels that the Euclidians are not going to do us any bodily harm, but we've seen so much of their power that it's rather hard to believe anything particularly nice about them. Well, one thing is certain... With this harbor all full of battleships and the carrier in there with a lot of planes on it, they're certainly not going to resort to any firing or bomb dropping. The Euclidians have many weapons that are practically noiseless. Well, that plane isn't noiseless by a long shot. I can hear it coming back in right now. They will attempt to frighten us, I believe. Well, they won't have to try very hard for me. 
I scare easy when those Euclidians are around. That plane is coming down awfully fast. Yes, it's coming right over us. Sounds like a power dive. Well, I'll bet there'll be a bomb at the bottom of it. Oh, what can we do? Nothing. Just sit still and wait for what happens. Well, they didn't hit us. They didn't try to hit us. They dropped something just as the plane passed over us, though. I'm sure of that. Yes. I thought I heard something hit the water. Have no fear. If they were using bombs, it would be only the magnetic type. Got any metal on this boat, Johnson? Not unless you brought it along with you. I even ripped out a small capstan head for it. Well, then we can keep moving. But if there's one little piece of metal on this boat, we'll stay right here. Johnson, your anchor. We have no anchor, Mrs. Gregory. You are very thorough, Mr. Johnson. It pays to be thorough in this sort of business. Well, we seem to be going smoothly along and nothing's happening. Yep. But those fellows from the Magic Island fool you. Just when you think you've seen the whole show, they dig out one more trick. Well, they must have dug one out then. Here they come back to try it out on us. Sorry we haven't any protection on this little boat. Well, don't worry about that, Johnson. A battleship doesn't carry enough protection to save it from a Euclidean plane if they're attacking in earnest. I would suggest we all sit perfectly still, make no move as the plane goes over, and concentrate on trying to discover their purpose in these repeated dives. That's right, Joan. Now everybody sit still with your eyes wide open. Sure, feels like it. The cooling system in that plane must be leaking. I felt a fine, heavy spray, slightly warm as they passed over us. Well, I'd say that wasn't accidental. They managed to cover us pretty thoroughly with it. And my clothing feels wet all over. Yeah, my sleeves are... Say, well, that's funny. What, Jerry? My sleeves were wet, soaking wet, and now they're dry. Why, you're right, Jerry. They have used a chemical of some kind with which to spray this boat. Well, what for, Joan? The reason is not apparent to me as yet. It can't be anything very destructive. It didn't burn where it touched the skin. And it doesn't seem to be affecting the fabric of our clothing. If we could only smell the blame stuff, we might get an idea. Euclidians are far too clever to allow an odor to identify any of their preparations. Well, whatever this stuff is, I'll bet we find out a lot about it mighty quick. Look, that plane's coming back. What can they do to us? Anything they take a notion to, I guess. I believe I understand the purpose of this liquid spray now. Well, what is it, Joan? I will not tell you. Oh, but Joan... No, Mother. If the effect will be as I think, you might do something foolish in attempting to escape from it when our greatest safety lies in doing nothing. Well, I hope you know best, Joan. Here he comes. you thought it was, Joan. You're wrong. He didn't do a blame thing to us. Have you tried to move your hands? Move our hands? Why, say, what is this? Magnetism again. Tex, I'm absolutely powerless. I can't move at all. They sprayed us with that magnetic paint of theirs. Precisely. And this last time he dropped magnetic bombs all around us. You know, we had plenty of this sort of treatment on that island. Well, tell me, how lasting is the effect? That will depend on how many bombs were dropped in the water near us and what materials the bomb casings are made of. You will observe that the boat is no longer making any progress. Oh, you're right, Joan. We're standing still except for a little drift with the tide. And we'll stand here until the solution from those bombs becomes so diluted in the water that it won't hold us? Correct, Captain. Well, well that won't take long, will it, Joan? I believe the pilot of that plane may have arranged that it will take several hours. Several hours? Why, Joan, dear, that magnetic solution can't possibly stand up in water that long. You would be right, Mother, if the solution was all formed at once. But I imagine some of those bombs were made to float and dissolve at certain intervals, continually generating fresh magnetism on their contact with the salt water. Then, if that's the case, we, we may be here all night? At least. We may be here long enough for the submarine we left magnetized to free itself and come up after us. Well, you mean to tell me that all we can do is just sit around here like a bunch of statues and let this boat drift around with us? That is all. Well, 
Now I'm beginning to understand something of what you've all been through on that island. Oh, we sure had plenty of weird things happen to us. Look, that plane seems to be on his way now. Yes. I can't hear it anymore. He must be going back to Euclidia. I think that is correct. But how do they refuel those things? <laughs> they don't much. We've learned a lot of things, Johnson. One of them is that we don't know anything about fuel or how to use it. Well, uh, we'll get our hands on all those formulas when we go back to the Magic Island. I'm not at all sure I want to go back, Jerry. Sometimes I feel that Euclidia is a very fascinating place, and at other times I hate it. Just now, I'm not very kindly disposed toward G-47 and his men. Oh, yes, his men. How about this fellow Thales? What did you finally do to get rid of him, Johnson? I've never seen him. Never seen him? No, Mrs. Gregory. Then you were right, Tex. That radio was wrecked by remote control. Johnson, did you find your set burned up or melted down? Both. Some highly caustic chemical was suspended near every vital part of the set. When I used it to warn you, it simply flowed over everything and put the set out of business. But you mean to say, Johnson, you have no idea where Thales is or what he looks like? No, not the slightest. I have seen him on Euclidia. I would recognize him if I saw him again, I believe. Hmm. I hope you get a chance to point him out to me. Oh, Tex, look. What, Pat? Well, that boat. See that big shadow off the port bow? Gee, it's a great big oil tanker. And he's bearing right down on us. We are helpless. None of us can make a move. They'll never turn that big boat in time. Can't blame them. We haven't any lights. And I painted the sails black so we wouldn't be seen. Tex, he's going to run us down. We'll sure get it in a minute. And we can't swim with this magnetic thing on us. Worse than that, we will sink immediately. He's almost on top. 